Yo guys, what's up? It's Julian. Today, I'm going to be showing you how to make classic deep house like Carrie Chandler. This one has been requested a ton, so I figured it was time. And yeah, as usual, you can get the project file and samples from this video in the description. I'm going to be giving them away for free, so make sure to check that out. And let's get started. So, the first sound that I have here is this like high string thing, which sounds like this. And so the way that I made this was actually a little bit interesting. So what I did was I took this sample of like a pretty high string sample. Basically just like an old school like M1 style string. And what I did was I put it into this granulator. And if you don't know the granulator, it's a granular synth for Max for Live. Um, yeah, it's free. If you have Ableton 10, you can use it. But basically, what it does is it's a granular synth. And so what granular synth this is, is basically it's playing the sound back the way a sampler would. However, instead of playing it back from start to finish like a sampler, it plays back like random parts of the sample. Like if you look at this, that yellow line that's moving around frantically, that's all the different parts of the sample is playing. And so this is really cool when you have like a long held out sound like this, because what you can do is you can essentially just make it infinite. Like this sample, is only so long, and if I put that in a simpler, then at some point it would cut off. But with this, we just make this endless loop that's really smooth and really seamless. So that was how I did that. After that, I have a little bit of chorus uh, just to give it some space, as well as a bit of reverb to give it some space. There's some like stereo width is more what I mean with these two. Like I'm not really trying to add too much like ambience to it with the reverb because I mean it kind of already has a lot. But you can hear when I turn these off. It's a lot less wide, and so I wanted to be nice and stereo and kind of have like that old school sound, but a little bit cleaner and a little bit, yeah, just nicer and easier to listen to. So then after that, I've got a compressor, side chaining it to the kick, and then finally an EQ8, just cutting out the low end. Um, so then the next thing that we have here is this organ, which sounds like this. So the way that I made this was with analog. However, I'm going to show you the chords first. So as you can see, we have pretty dense chords here going on. And actually, they're not too crazy. All these are are just basic major and minor seventh chords. So what I've done here is I've taken, like here, for example, we have G sharp minor seven. That's the key word in G sharp minor. The string is just playing a G sharp, by the way. Um, and yeah, so what I've done is I've taken this. That's the basic chord. And then on every chord, I've just taken the root note, this note, and then the fifth. And then I've doubled them up an octave down. And what this does is it just kind of like makes them a bit deeper, a little bit bigger sounding. And it's also kind of more similar to how people play these kind of chords usually. Like in a lot of the old school deep house, like they weren't just programming it. Like they were actually playing those little organ riffs live. So yeah, this is kind of more similar to how you would like play it as opposed to like how you would program it if you were just looking at it, if that makes any sense. And then I've thrown in these little like bouncy notes here and there. like all these little things they're just kind of it's like punctuation you know like it just kind of gives it a little bit more like funk and again that's also something that comes when you're playing when you play stuff live as well a lot like a lot of times again those old school deep house riffs were played live so i mean they would just add this kind of stuff in just kind of on the fly like it's not really that complicated is what i'm saying you basically just kind of you know if you use notes in the chords those little things are pretty easy and then the only other thing that's really going on in here is you can see all the notes are swung. And yeah, I did this all by hand this time. I didn't use a swing. And the reason for this, or a groove, and the reason why I did this is because, like, again, with the old school stuff, they were playing it live a lot of the time. So you wouldn't have, like, everything in your track on the same gro groove like that. It would be, like, all kind of scattered like that because, again, it was playing live, but this gives it a more realistic human kind of feel. So then for the sound on this one, what I've got is I made it with analog. I've got two sine waves. Um, you can see the first one is down an octave, and the first one is at the regular octave, but an octave up from that. And then it's a fifth up as well. We got the seven semitones. Um, I just have those going into. I got the amplitude envelope, set like that. And then I've got a little bit of vibrato on here. You can see I've got a really fast rate, so that's just giving it that kind of like warbly sound. Just helps to give it more of that old school sort of house organ sound. Then I've got a little bit of chorus for some space. I've got an echo, which is also for space, and a little bit just more for, like, that cool kind of old-school analog echo feel. And then after that, I've got a little bit of reverb. You can see I get the size and the d decay time down a bunch, as well as the dry-wet. This is just giving it a little bit of space and making it feel more, like, roomy. 
Then I just got a compressor, side chaining it to the kick, and an EQ8 cutting out the norm. So the next thing that we have here are the basses, which sound like this. So it's two layers. I'll show you the notes first. It's just following the same chords, or the same chord progression as the organ, but it's just a little bit of a different pattern. You can hear they kind of like groove off of each other. So that's kind of a nice way to give some like variation and make it a little bit more interesting. Um, this is definitely something I hear in a lot of Carrie Chandler's music, as well as a bunch of the old other deep house stuff. Like, yeah, if you have like a bass pattern that's still following the same chord progression, like I said, but just a little bit different than your like organ or whatever else is like your main sort of chord thing, it can give it a really cool groove. And the way they play off of each other and off of the drums as well can make it really interesting. Now, for the sounds on these two, basically, like I said, it's two layers, so we have this sort of like donk, I guess you would call it, and then we have this one, which is more of like a watery kind of square wave bass. So, for the donk, what I've got is, basically, I made this operator, um, <laughs> yeah, like I said, it's just a simple FM donk. I've got them set like this, I got a little bit of uh, an envelope there on the second one, these two oscillators. Yeah, they're just kind of doing some FM. You can see I've got this one up, plus two, and then that is at 0.5. Um, the only other thing that's going on in operator here is I've got a little bit of a pitch envelope to make it kind of clicky. And yeah, then after that, I've got this saturator where I've got the drive up. I didn't touch any of these controls, but I changed the color mode to the sinoid fold, so it's a little bit different if you hear the analog clip, which is what it will be on by default. And then that sinoid fold is just kind of like, giving it a little bit more power, a little bit more punch, and just making it sound a little bit warmer as well. Then after that, I've got a compressor, side-chaining it to the kick, and then I have this EQ8 cutting out the, like, not the low end, but like around 100 hertz, because without it, when you play this with the kick, they're kind of clashing, so when you cut that out, just kind of helps differentiate them and make the mix a little bit cleaner. Then on the second layer, what I've got is, I made this one with operator as well. We just have one square wave, and that's going into a low-pass filter, which has an envelope on it, and then I've got a little bit of a pitch envelope on that as well. Then after that, I've got a bit of chorus, because I wanted this one to be a bit wider. I've heard this sound a lot in Carrie Chandler's music. Like, he'll use, like, a bass like this, where it's, like, like I said, like, this watery sort of, like, square wave bass. Where it's just kind of like a nice filtered down square wave that has a nice chorus on it to give it some width and make it just kind of, like I said, watery. So then after that, I got this saturator, I just gave it a bit of drive, and I got a compressor side chaining it to the kick, and then an EQ8 cutting out the low end since this, this donk up here is really like the sub. And then that's just cutting out the low end so this one can just kind of be on top of that. I also made a cut around 100 hertz there to make this one fit better with the kick as well. So that's pretty much it for like the synth. The next thing I have here are the drums, which all together sound like this. So I think with this style, the drums is really where a lot of the texture comes from. Like it's really where you can set that kind of like gritty sort of like analog warm feel in your track, if that makes any sense. And yeah, that's kind of what I've done here. So the first thing I've got is this kick, which sounds like this. It's just like a nice punchy, I think it's like a 909 style kick. Um, I've just put it in here and then I gave it a little bit of an envelope here. Or I played around with the envelope, I kind of shortened the decay. And yeah, not really too much to say. Something I will mention though is with the side chaining, like I said, all these instruments are side chained. And the only thing I can say with that is with this style of stuff, the side chaining is very important to get the groove right because you need everything kind of pumping off of that kick like that to make you really like bob your head. You just don't want to go too crazy because this kick is very powerful, like I was saying. And if you do too much side chaining, your individual elements will kind of get lost. Like, it, it'll go from sounding just like a cleaner mix to like a way too side chain mix, if that makes any sense. So that's the kick. Next thing we have here are these hi hats, which sound like this. So, what we've got here are just, like I said, simple closed hi hat and an open hi hat. I believe these are also from a 909, and then you can see I just have this pattern here. So I've kind of just written in like this four bar little funky like hi-hat pattern. Really not too much I can say here. You just kind of have to play around with it. And what I always do is I start with the open hi-hat since that's always just going to be on the upbeat like that. And then I write in the closed hi-hat around it. It makes it a lot easier because you kind of have like this anchor that you can work with if that makes any sense. 
So then, uh, like I said, I have those both in a drum rack. I didn't really do too much processing. I just shortened them both with the fades to kind of clean them up. And then you can see in the drum rack here, I have this choke set to one on both of these. So essentially what that is, it's just saying that whenever one sound is playing, the other one will always cut off. So it's useful for the open hi-hat because this open hi-hat sample is kind of long. And so to have it like, like you can have it sh basically close as soon as that close hi-hat comes in. It sounds kind of nice. And this is also in a lot of Carrie Chandler's music. So then the only effects I have on there is just an EQ8, cutting out the low end to clean it up. And then I boosted it a little bit of high end as well to make it a little bit crisper. So then the next sound that we have here is this clap, which sounds like this. So the way that I made this clap was I just took like a simple kind of punchy clap, and then I put a little bit of saturation. And so you can hear the saturation from here to there. You can hear the saturation is just kind of making it a little bit edgier, a little bit more like, I guess, crunchy. Like, again, with the drums is really where you kind of set that, like, texture and that feel that you want to have your track have sonically. So, you know, doing very subtle saturation and, like, not too much but just enough where you hear it is really good for this kind of stuff. Again, it just gives the drums so much texture. Then after that, I just have an EQ8 cutting out the lawn. And that is it for the clap. So then the next thing that we have here is this little drum rack, which has some percussion in it. It sounds like this. It's that. So basically what I have in here is I have a 909 rim shot and then a 909 snare as well. And yeah, as you can tell, 909 drums, very important for the style. Carrie Chandler uses the 909 a ton. All the old Deep House guys used it. Like, you don't have to buy a 909 necessarily, but definitely, like, just go online and try to find some 909 samples or use the ones from this video because they're free, by the way, in the description. <laughs> but yeah, like, definitely using 909 samples. Like, there's just really no other way around it. Like, those are the sounds that really get you this, this vibe, you know? So, yeah, that's what I've got here. I just have a 909 rim shot, like I said. I pitched that a little bit. And I've got a 909 snare, which I shortened. Um, and then I've got those going into a bit of saturation again to just beef it up. And then I got an EQ8 cutting out the low end to clean it up. And then as far as the pattern goes here, you can hear it's kind of just playing off of like what the groove is doing. Like I just sort of listen to the rest of the track. And then just added those in where they where I felt like they needed to be. And then I got this little fill at the end as well. Stuff like that is kind of nice because Truth be told, this can be kind of loopy music. Like, it's very much about loops and just kind of like, you know, like having something that repeats a lot. So having kind of little fills like that, I feel like help bring that like life to it that is really present in a lot of this music. So then the last layer that we have here is the shaker, which sounds like this. So what this is, it's just kind of like this nice, like sort of high pitched shaker loop. And then I've taken it in here and just brought it into the arrangement. And then I've got a compressor on it, side chaining it to the kick to sort of make it fit with the groove a little bit more. And then I've got an EQ8 cutting out the low end. And so this one is really simple, but it's very important. Um, these shakers, I hear these a ton in Carrie Chandler's music. Like, he really likes using these. And for good reason. They help to bring a lot of, like, organic vibe to your track. And it's really nice when you have, like, the 909 drums, which are very machine-like. And while they're warm and analog sounding, they're not really organic, um, but this brings in like a more organic kind of like human layer, and that's really the whole thing. Like with house, like you really want to bring that kind of like humanity to it. I feel like, like I mean, of course, this doesn't apply to every case, but I feel like that's really what separates it from like techno or from just kind of darker things. It's like that really organic human feel. So having a shaker like this really helps. And then as far as like choosing a shaker sound, the only thing I can say is. Just try to find like a big, nice one like this. Like you could use this one. Like I said, it's all in the description. But yeah, just something like that that's kind of like big and full. Like you don't want like a little subtle one. You want something that's really big that's going to jump out. And give the mix that groove. If I turn it off, it's just not the same, you know? So definitely the shaker is pretty important. And with that, I think that's going to be it for today. I just wanted to show you guys some techniques. I've gotten a ton of requests for this one, and so I figured it was time. And yeah, so that's going to be it for today, guys. Make sure to let me know what you think of this video in the comments, and make sure to like this video as well as subscribe. Um, thank you again, everybody. Once again, you get the project file and samples from this video in the description for free, so make sure to check that out. My social media is also in the description. You can check that out as well. 
And yeah, thank you again, everybody. And I will see you tomorrow with another tutorial.